Welcome, Gary Pierce here again. Today I'm going to do a review on my OK, the German bow, the Absolute 40. Now, bows, modern bows these days, they, they all shoot spectacularly well. They have a multitude of ideas with strings and limbs and riser shapes, but they all work. Bows are one of those things that I've said that you really need to look at a bow like like the look of the bow, the colour, and go from there. Because at the end of the day, every modern bow is going to shoot better than what the archer is going to shoot it. So it comes down to that preference. The reason I like the absolute, uh, sorry, the OK, is purely because of the shoot through cable system. I just think it makes sense. Everything draws straight. There's no cam leans. There's no disfiguration of the limbs at full draw with you, when you've got your cable guide over here and it's German. I'm a big fan of German engineering and German technology. That's why I like my BMWs. So that's the two main reasons I like this bow. The initial, the, 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 I'll go through the parts of the bow that I think is important part. That, like I say, this is the shoot through cable system. You have the cables each side of the top limb, the cam, down to the each side of this cam and equally the same the other way. So what it means is that the whole system draws equally. So when you line up, you, you, you knock you, where your arrow's knocked to your rest, to your dot, everything's dead straight. When you want to set the cam up for your cam, your cam lean, so much, and your, your cam um, synchronising, it's a matter of just visually checking the position of the cam relative to the strings, twist in and out of each cable to get it all straight. Then you do the whole process with the synchronising at draw, which means half twist in, out, you know, the routine for getting that right. And what makes it particularly easy on this bow, if you need to put a twist in this cable to straighten up your cam, you just pull down on the opposing cable like that, and you can actually just flip the, cable, flip the string off. So you've got no need for presses or anything to do your cam synchronising, which is a bonus as well. <coughs> The cams themselves on this bow, they come in three sizes. This is the medium cam. There's obviously one each side of this. Now, the, the, the cam size is like all bows is relative to your draw length. I get away with a medium cam with a specific module for my draw length. The modules are good, very nice modules. They go right through the cam. So they're located, no question. They don't come loose and slide. Each module gives you about an inch variation, I believe, in the draw length. So you've got quarter inch increments with four adjustments. They've got a nice flat plate here, which comes around and sits onto your, onto your cable, which gives you a nice stop. Or to make it even better, they've actually got this, this lug here that's adjustable on the cam. So when you draw the bow, I think you should be able to see it, it actually comes around and stops on the bottom of your limb. So when you draw this bow back, it's like hitting a wall, it doesn't go anywhere. Now that's a personal preference. I was talking to Scott Buscombe the other night at an indoor shoot we had. Scott doesn't use these stops, and I can understand that because with that size of that plate, four of them hitting these strings, the stop is nice anyway. But I've just sort of left them on there, it's just a personal thing that at full draw, it's just like, you're not going anywhere. It would probably be a benefit to you guys with your back tension releases. Like Jimmy was saying, he was pulling too hard. You can't pull past this. It stops dead still. Nice shape cam, nice size cam. Quite forgiving. A nice load up when you draw the bow back, even although it still has, has quite good arrow speed. I only shoot 54 pounds, so I'm shooting lighter arrows and the arrow velocity is actually quite good. Now, the limbs, as you can see, it's, it's a parallel limb bow. The limbs are actually quite thin, which is unusual. Now, I have heard of a few issues with the limbs, a bit of splintering on the edges. I meant to talk to Scott Buskin the other night about that, but I forgot. When I got this bow from one of our club members, um, I, I did have another set of limbs with it um, for the same reason. So obviously the new limbs are on it. The, the limb system is good in the sense that if you need, with a shorter drawer, I, I needed to get the poundage up. So what you do is you just twist up these cables here, which pulls the limbs in tighter, more preload, and then you can do your adjustment here for your, your poundage on your bow. 
it's it, the, another thing, good thing with a parallel limb bow, if you crank the poundage up and put more load on your limbs, it doesn't affect your brace height. So that's that's a bonus with this as well. But generally, it, it, the bow itself is very nice to shoot. A little bit more forgiving, I suppose forgiving's not the right word, but it's more comfortable to shoot. If you make a mistake with this, it's it's a mistake, but it's nowhere near as bad as what it was, was with my Fanatic I had before. I love the Fanatic. Huge, fast, fast, fast cams are amazing, but if you made a mistake, instead of a seven or a six, it was a two, and, and you had to be on your game with that. Now this bow too, another feature I like is the twin string stops. It gives, you, when the, the string comes through and hits the stops, there's an equal pressure at top and bottom of the string, so the string keeps coming through at that straight line. If you've ever watched a compound being shot in slow motion and watch what the string does, you'll understand how the two string stops can be a benefit because it, it holds the string consistently with an even release through the centre. Now this is the clever part with these bows. Being a centre, centre shot bow, or shoot through a cable system, they don't need to have a window and a cable guide. So what they've done, they've manufactured so that the riser and the riser is ambidextrous. So that's clever technology to make a left or right handed bow, it's the same bow. All they've done is set up burger holes threaded for your, for your rest if you're left eye dominant, plus the threading up here for your sight. So it's exactly the same riser whether you buy a left or right hand bow. And that's clever technology because you're only manufacturing one riser. The finish on the bow, they've, they've, it's gone to what the most of the modern bows are starting to go. It's like a dull satin anodised finish, which is quite durable because the anodising is a lot better than paint. It won't chip and scratch so much. And I think your new PSE, Jimmy, is the same, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. Coming anodised. PSE have gone that way as well. Um, there's an array of colours of cams, string stops, and your stabiliser mounts here. Obviously, I was, again, Scott Buskin was telling me when you actually order one of these, that's when they go through the process and anodise all the components to put the bow together for you. Um, yeah, there's not much more I can add to that. It's a nice axle axle, 40 inches, which is, you know, your regularly your target bows tend to be a little bit longer to be a little bit more forgiving. Very nice bow. Probably the only thing, critis criticisms I've got, not, not criticisms as such, but can be issues for people. The cable system is quite narrow here. Martin bought this system out 15, 16 years ago on a scepter, and the cables were quite a bit wider. With these, they're quite narrow, so if you're shooting an indoor arrow with big fletches, it can be a problem. But you can get string spreaders for them that actually separate the strings. And another issue I found with the factory strings, they were quite thick, they were about 24 strands in these cables here. So what it meant, these cables were actually rubbing quite considerably as you drew the bow back and shot the bow. So I madly started making up some new cables out of fast flight. Being old school, fast flight was the go-to component or, or string making material years ago and I've just kept going that way. So I made up a set of fast flight uh, cables because when I twisted the original cables up to get the more poundage on it, it made put too many twists in the cable so if when I was trying to get my cam synchronising right, half a twist was too much sometimes. So I had to go to a shorter string to get less twist so I had more, more twist up to get the cam synchronising spot on. So I made them out of fast flight. Anyway, I was talking to Scott Buscombe at the Indoor Nationals down there in July. Talking, He said, oh no, he said, fast flight's not no good now, it stretches. And I thought, well, that's funny because back in my day, fast flight was a go-to material. I reckon it didn't stretch. So I took Scott's advice. This is what you have to do, regardless of how long you've been here, to listen to people. Scott suggested the 452X BCY. So went and bought some of that, but made up new cables again with 16 strands, again he recommended. The cable pressure now is, is quite minimal and this stuff is the this stuff is brilliant. I can't speak more highly of how this stuff is, it does not stretch at all. What I was doing as I was making a cable, I would replace them individually to keep the cam synchronising correct. And one time there I had the BCY cable this side and the fast flight this side. And I drew the bow back just to keep the cam synchronising and I could actually see the cam lent towards the fast flight cable, telling me that the fast flight was stretching. And that, that sold it for me. So I've got the bow set up. I shot a dozen arrows, 
redid the synchronizing and that was about two months ago and I haven't touched it and it's still perfect. So this stuff, this 452X, it's great. I'll be making a new string out of it as well. Just uh, one more thing I forgot to mention. This is again information from Scott Buscom. Because of the way these cable systems run, these cables do rub a little bit on each other. With the thinner cables, it's much better. It's not a big issue. But Scott pointed something out, which again is another simple thing that I never thought of. I like to think I'm pretty clever with stuff. I've been building motor cars all my life, but I didn't even think of this. At the top where these cables are located, you've got these lugs. Most bows have got this obviously on the yoke at the top. Now what Scott told me to do was swap two of the, the centre cables, swap the lugs the other way so that the, the groove is closer to the limb. What this does is put the cable just a little bit further in, just takes that little bit more pressure off the cables rubbing. Probably doesn't make a difference, but it's something to think, it's something that I did and I thought that's a great idea, so I don't have to think about that anymore. And the only other downside I'd say with this bow, the handles, because they're ambidextrous, they're quite straight here, they don't have a recess left or right handed. The centre part of the handle is actually quite narrow, it pushes into your hand a bit. I've done with this bow what I don't like people doing with their bows, I've actually got a squash racket or tennis racket grip on it just to soften it up a bit. But other than those two points, <coughs> I love the bow, it it's, sounds nice, it's smooth, it it's quite fast and it's just something that, that I've really enjoyed. So I just thought I'd put it out there to see you guys, you know, obviously your Hoyts and your, and your PSEs, they're all top equipment, but you, and you've got to pick a bow purely by what you like the looks of. You get it set up, you get used to it, and you're comfortable with it. And that's the thing, it doesn't matter what bow you shoot, it'll work for you if you're happy with it.